part of what I want to talk about today is how do we get people to start to talk about the stuff, the tougher stuff, and work together to figure out routes, ways they can work together to address the tougher pieces. Okay? Because framing it as a simple problem will never get you there. Framing it as a simple problem will always lead you to look for the simple solution. People typically name problems by making one of several errors. One error is, is they name the problem in terms of their preferred solution. Okay? So when I hear educators say, the problem is we don't have enough money. What's the solution? They need more money. They need more money, okay. Are there other solutions that are possible for that sure. problem? No, for that problem. For the problem of no. we don't have enough money. No, no okay. the way they frame it. Okay, okay. So, the, so when you bring people together, what you really want to do is talk about, just get a list of their concerns. Just get a list, <laughs> okay. Once you've got a list of their concerns, organize them into three or four major buckets. And then we put the people into groups of four, and we said your job now is to take these 75 and organize them into three or four main perspectives. Okay. Why three or four? Well, if you only had two, people would get polarized right away. If you had more than four, people would be confused. You can't hold more than four ideas in your head at one time. And there's re really interesting social science, uh, cognitive psychology research on that. So only f maximum of four, three or four, okay? So we tell people to put them into, into I say buckets, or category, but just put them in buckets. And they say, well, how do you do that? Okay. So I say, well, remember the Sesame Street song? Dick, you may not remember it, but you may. Um, which one of these is not like the others? Yeah. Which one of these is not the same, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not the same. The idea is to pick which one's not the same. I say, I want you to do the opposite. Pick one thing, one of, one of the 75, and figure out which ones are like that. Don't figure, don't sit, figure out, don't, don't be concerned with why they're like it, just which ones are like that. That's one bucket. Then pick another item, which ones are like that, until you have three or four buckets, and, and that include most of the items, and you're done, okay? The way you typically draw that circle is by what people value, what people find important. People can agree about values even if they disagree about actions. And it's not that they have to agree about what is the most valuable thing. So what I value, I may value, um, I may value um, equity a whole lot. Don, you may value safety more. Correct. That's okay. I value safety too, so we, we can find common ground around safety. Mm -hmm. The thing about common ground, so you're not trying to get consensus. You're trying to get common ground. Why? Consensus takes a long time. Consensus is really, the, the Quakers have taught us a lot. One thing is, it's, a, it's really difficult to create consensus. Common ground is easier, because common ground is where can, guys know the hokey pokey? Yeah. Know the hokey pokey? Okay. When you think about the hokey pokey, I'll get up. I, normally if I'm teaching, I, a lot of time I, we would, would all do it. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, put your right foot in and shake it all about. Imagine we're all in a circle. I'm going to say to you, stop right there. Put your right foot out, right? So now, the area that includes all of our right feet and only our right feet is what I want to call the common ground. Notice that my left foot is planted firmly someplace. Okay? I'm not giving up my individuality for the common ground. We want to figure out what the common ground is, what people can hold in common, even while they hold something else as individuals. Once we have that, we can use that common ground to build action.